Welcome everyone to a brief look at the EVGA E1 and this video is just going to be a walk around no b-roll or anything and you know this is actually the sort of video that I like to see like just to get a really realistic idea of what something is actually like what it looks like how it works I'm not doing this video on request from EVGA I'm just doing it because I think this case is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen it is highly creative and you know certainly a bit impractical and you know that's a lot of people say that about me sometimes like you've always been someone who's obsessed with function and you know function is just absolutely number one so then why are you interested in these things that are like super creative and impractical and you know the function is possibly impaired by how creative it is well when it's something that is you know so cool and I, I do love the creative side I love themes and you know customizing and you know creating something that when you look at it you actually feel the emotion of the theme you know which is basically the same thing as art and that's what I get when I look at this I feel the passion that the creator had and it was like so much passion really that they had this like crazy bold idea, which might have been actually a, a little bit of a bad idea. There might have been some real risks involved with creating something like this. And I can see the risks in like the fact that they've included spares of these cables here, which hold the motherboard tray because there's going to be a lot of weight on these, like the hell of a lot of weight with liquid cooling. And, you know, obviously somebody said like an engineer or something said, yeah, it's like a cool idea, but there's a lot of problems here. These things are going to stretch over time. We're going to have warranties. And they're like, no, we're just going to do it anyway because it's just a super cool idea. And I really like that, you know. It shows that there's some actual passion behind this. And I also wanted to make this video because it's really sad to see EVGA leave the GPU market. They've been around like the entire time that I've been doing this. I've used so many EVGA GPUs. I've overclocked the hell out of so many of their parts. I've never RMA'd any. I've had so much fun with, you know, the Kingpin editions and just a lot of their hardware. So I can definitely understand their decision, but it is certainly sad to see them go and I hope it's not going to have a negative impact on them. I really hope that they can get into doing more things like this. So I really hope that this case, this idea is successful for them. So there's very little information about this on the site. I was actually quite surprised. Like there's no write-ups or like they're not trying to, market it or push it they're just letting the product sell itself which i do really like that you know there's no marketing speak or anything there's like barely any specifications i'm not sure if i'm just looking at the wrong area of the site and there's some more info somewhere else but yeah i really liked how it was just basically a couple of photos and a video and and that's it and there's not much to it i mean it's just a it's a carbon fiber frame and when i say just carbon fiber is extremely difficult to manufacture and that's something else I can really appreciate here. I, I really like to be able to see the way that something was created and, and see the challenges that they had creating it because carbon fiber, this is probably not pre-preg, it's just cloth and you ha actually have to cut up the cloth and lay it and you know then it's like well pre-preg is done in an autoclave with a vacuum and there's other methods of carbon fiber. I think this one that's probably just vacuumed, like they pull the resin through it after it's laid. So the way that it's cut and laid is really important. And you know, then the way the vacuum is set up and the resin and the viscosity and the strength of the vacuum and getting all the air out and all of that, it's like so difficult. So you can actually see like some of the challenges that they've had, like the joints are not 100% perfect. They're like folded over each other. It's a little bit messy, which means that every frame is different and you know you can see the way it's being built and that's something I really like I don't like something that just looks like it's just being kind of molded because molding is a really a cheap manufacturing process I like to be able to see you know machining marks or something to show that it was like carved out of a solid piece or the or there was just a really challenging process involved in creating it and that's what you can see with this frame like I absolutely love this and this thing is super light. I think it's, I think maybe it's 2.63 pounds if I remember rightly. Like, you know, you can almost, here, let me 
I'll try to pick this up with one finger. There we go. Like when it came in the box, I just thought, is the box empty? <laughs> is there anything in there? So yeah, there's that carbon fiber frame and then we have some turned stainless. Yeah, these are stainless. So these are really nice components as well. Like anything with stainless, I love it. It's expensive. It's turned, which is again, a really expensive manufacturing process. We have some more turned parts here. And then we have this cable, which also kind of looks like carbon. And it's, it's like really stiff, but it is a little bit flexible. So that's actually cool if you're transporting this, like the, you know, the motherboard and all of the components can actually move a little bit. And just a little bit of flex is enough to take out the G-forces that are going to damage the parts. Mainly once this is loaded up, it probably flexes a little bit. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, just super thin, like aluminum frame here. It's actually still really strong, but strength might be a bit of a concern. You know, this, IO piece is, is quite wobbly, but you know, I'm not saying anything bad about this. When, when I get something creative and impractical, I kind of see it as a challenge for myself to build it in such a way where it will become practical, like put a super functional and practical build in there and, you know, make up for the, the crazy creative flair of the people who, who design this thing. And that is actually the other reason that I'm making this video. We are going to be making a power board for this case and a distribution plate. So like a, a distribution plate and power board combo. So yeah, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. What would you like to see? Like how would you like us to go about designing the power board and the distribution plate? So the, the motherboard sits in the middle and it's, you know, this is sandwich power supplies on the back. It's actually kind of a similar layout really to the PCO11. Vertical GPU here, radiator mounts at the top and front, and they've gone so minimalistic on this that they don't actually have all of the fan mounting holes on these radiator mounts, only the four corner holes for 360 millimeter radiators, which means the fans always have to go on the inside, but you know, that's no big deal at all. And yeah, there's really not much more to say about the case, but like when I look at this, it's just a blank canvas. There's so much that you could do with this. Like the layouts are just endless. There's a lot of space in there to play with, but what it's screaming for is a power board because the cable management in this thing is going to be a nightmare. Like you've got no cable management, anything. The cables are just going to be hanging in midair. There's nowhere to even like cable tie the components, the cables to the back of the motherboard tray. So cable management is like a, a big challenge in this. But again, you know, impractical, but the challenge is cool. That's what makes me want to actually build into it. So certainly not negatives about the case. <laughs> and then they go and create this, these huge gauges, which just like mount onto the frame here, which again, I think it's like not really my taste, but super industrial and as someone who's like really into overclocking if you just wanted to just build your overclocking system this is you know this is really cool for overclocking and i think it's like super over the top but just a very cool idea not many accessories a lot of cables vertical gpu riser and yeah i don't know really what else i can say but we will keep you updated on the power board and distribution plate once it's completed we'll certainly be showing that and i definitely like to hear your ideas for that and what you think about this case and also what you think about the situation with evga you know would be very interested to hear it and hopefully the company still has a bright future because they've done so many great things and i have so many great memories of using EVGA GPUs over the years.